So, good morning, students. Good morning to all of you. Saranya, Mamta, I'm good hearing. <coughs> so now, students, uh, let's quickly then get started with our uh, lectures. Have you all revised, students, yesterday's part? And if you have any queries, please quickly, uh, you can ask me the query if you have any such queries. So do let me know. I can just quickly resolve before we start in the next two minutes. Do let me know on that. Amrita, good morning. Ujwal, good morning. Any query students very quickly before all the students join and then we can start with this. <coughs> Shali, good morning. I think uh, you can type your query students and I can just start with your permission. Can we start with the remaining quickly? We can finish it off first. Uh, the balance part of transfer pricing and then I'll move to the equalization levy. So in this session students, our focus would be on completing the balance transfer pricing. Hopefully all of you would have gone through. I have forgotten students are just because yesterday I was not that well. So just that thing skipped to my mind. Uh, I will be giving in the description link of the video all the uh, yesterday's videos also today's videos also all the lectures that we have done of the english revision lectures that we have done up till now i'll just give them in the description link uh, that i'll do it but tomorrow monday you will find all the links of those lectures which should be there okay markup cost is the comparable usual you will take the comparable data now whatever is a comparable markup that is what you take okay and once that you take the markup you will then do the adjustment relating to the 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 uncommon factors between the two transaction the comparable transaction and the international transaction and in there therefore from that markup of the comparable data you will then do the adjustment relating to the uncommon factor so as to ensure that that markup is adjusted or aligned to the factors which are there in the international transaction the factors which are there in the international transaction and that adjusted markup is what you are going to add on the total cost of the international transaction that will get get you the alp again i'm repeating this markup percentage ankita uh, ankita i think today evening or maybe tomorrow because today is sunday today evening the first part of the hindi will be released uh, of 45 marks up till transfer pricing up till transfer pricing ankita the hindi part will be released okay transfer pricing and equalization levy so whatever i have done up till this the so same would be released in hindi also today evening or tomorrow morning okay so that will be released don't worry is that clear <coughs> so that is a recorded video which would get released so ajwal you have to then take into account what I have told to you, you will have to take into account the adjusted markup on the cost because it's a cost plus method. So therefore, do ensure that the adjusted markup is always calculated on the cost. Resale price method, I told you that the resale margin that you have to calculate, that resale margin would be calculated on. What is the percentage for markup? Percentage of markup, how do we know? We will not know beforehand that percentage of markup will come to know only what is there in the comparable transaction so the question will give you the comparable data and in the comparable data what is the markup that markup is what we are going to select and on that markup we will then do the adjustment relating to the uncommon factor so markup is not fixed the markup will be always given would always be determined on the basis of the question that has been given to you on the basis of the data which is available of the comparable on that basis we will know the markup otherwise markup will not be known 
any method, whether it is a cost plus method, whether it is a resale price method, whether it is a transaction at margin method, you will never know the markup percentage upfront. Is that clear? The markup percentage will be known in the question only based on the data which is available of the comparable. Perfect. Let's then start students. Now students, I will quickly do finish of the remaining part now students and the remaining part which you can all see. This is one again one theory question was being asked. Students, I think you should be clear about the concepts of transfer pricing very thoroughly because ICI is using this transfer pricing topic both for practicals as well as on the sentence they will ask you theory like yesterday we did APA. So just read the important theory that we have discussed in the APA because on the basis of that they will frame a question, they will frame a case studies and that is very popular kind of a question which they ask in the examination. One very popular question students that we all know in in the examination is that they will give you a case study on transfer pricing and then they will ask you series of five questions small small question one two three four five and then each question may be carrying two marks so what are they actually you'll realize that you actually may have to write theory and only in that five one or two will have to do some will have to do with some calculations only one or one or two sub questions in that five questions you may have to do some calculations rest of it you will end up writing only theory this is the kind of the question which we have seen also in the past for transfer pricing topic so in the transfer pricing topic this is also a very popular question students and that is one of the things that you should have a conceptual clarity so far as the topic is concerned now one question which i will discuss with you what the ica has targeted in this drp route every one of you just pay attention to this one now students here in this case please pay no two questions two questions students, two questions on drp I'll discuss two questions on DRP, which was also targeted in your MCQ. Let's quickly run through this. Uh, first of all, students, the traditional route of filing an appeal. I think all of you are aware of the traditional route of filing of the appeal. So what is the traditional route of filing of the appeal? So this is what they have given it to you. Uh, you just focus on this particular chart, students, all of you. So just all of you focus on this particular chart and as we all can know that first is you have to file the ROI students you will have to file the ROI would be filed by the taxpayer so the ROI would be filed by the taxpayer that's the point number one so ROI would be filed by the taxpayer and thereafter once the ROI is filed the assessing officer will give the reference to the transfer pricing officer so the reference will be given to the transfer pricing officer transfer pricing officer will then issue the order after examining the documents evidences submitted by the taxpayer and finally students thereafter the assessing officer will pass the final order see these are the important circles which i'm making for all of you because these are distinctions which you will find it in the in the uh, drp so final order by the assessing officer after giving effect to the transfer pricing officer orders thereafter students if the SSE is aggrieved by the order which he will be then he will file an appeal now this particular appeal student will, will be filed before the CIT appeal this particular appeal will be filed before the CIT appeal and thereafter students it will go to the ITAT after the CIT appeal students it will then go before the ITAT okay ITAT High Court High Court Supreme Court this is the traditional route of going with that transfer pricing case so how do we go about the transfer pricing case this is how the assessment and the appeal follows the assessment and the appeal now what changes in the drp both in the form of assessment as well as in the form of appeal is given as under let's see the drp route and therein i'll take you through to the examination question what kind of examination question in the mcq was been targeted first of all here students the drp route students can you see that the drp route initial reference will remain the same like uh, the roi and the form filed uh, by the taxpayer then thereafter students the reference has been made to the transfer pricing officer by the ao thereafter students the transfer pricing officer issues the order after examining the documents evidence submitted by the taxpayer and the point number four is the order by the AO after giving effect to the transfer pricing order. After giving effect of what? To the transfer pricing order. Okay, that is what is the entire scenario. Now see what happens here. 
Now, this order, students, is the, known as a draft order. Students, you can write here in, this is a draft order, not the final order. This order that will be passed on by the AO to the taxpayer is a draft order. Now, be very careful about it. Now, on this draft order, the SSC has got two options. This is what was a question that was being targeted. On this draft order, the SSC has two options. One, he can place the objection on this draft order within 30 days before the DRP. Before the DRP. But if supposingly the SSC does not want to go to the DRP, he can, he can remain silent. He can just remain silent, just keep quiet. What happens? This DRP, this draft order automatically will become the final order and that once it becomes a final order accordingly you can then file an appeal before the CIT appeal so here you have two options now option number one go to the DRP and put up your objection before the DRP or objection number two don't do anything in DRP stay silent and after 30 days this particular DRP order uh, the draft order will become the final order and once it becomes a file order, thereafter you can go and file the appeal. These are the two options which are available to the SSC on the basis of the draft order that they are receiving from the AO after the transfer pricing officer has submitted its report to the AO. So if the DRP route is taken, students, if the DRP route is taken, then he is going to file an objection before the DRP. And once the objection has been put up, students, be very careful. Direction is given to whom? To the assessing officer. Once the DRP thereafter is getting the case and the objection from the SSC, the DRP thereafter will put up the ob uh, directions to the AO. And on the basis of the direction, the AO will pass the final order before the taxpayer. On the basis of the direction, the AO will pass the final order and thereafter the taxpayer will file the appeal against the final order. The appeal will be filed before the ITAT. Why it goes to the ITAT? Why not to the CIT appeal? Because the panel of the DRP consists only of the CITs. The panel of the DRP consists only of the CITs and that is the reason why that against the final order passed by the AO on the basis of the direction that it has received from the DRP which consists of the panel of the CIT. Thereafter, if the SSC has any objection on this particular file order, he can file the appeal directly before the ITAT. He can file the appeal directly before the ITAT. Okay. From ITAT, it goes to High Court, High Court to the refer to the Supreme Court. I hope that every one of you are clear with this one. No doubt about this one, not friends. Fine. Now, one more question which is asked by the ICI. Please pay attention to the question. Question is this that whether before the DRP, the SSC will get any opportunity of being heard. Whether before the DRP, the SSC gets any opportunity of being heard, that becomes a question. So here in this context, students, what could be our answer? So please be very careful. Here it is not like the normal hearings and all which takes place. No, you have the objection against the draft order of the AO. Please give the objection in a detailed manner. Please give the objection in the detailed manner, Amruta. And once you give the objection in the detailed manner, that is it. Then the DRP will see that objection. And on that basis, they will then decide to give the direction to the AO. So this is not like a normal hearing process wherein you are being called upon and then we will ask you something and then again you will come back and then I'll ask you something and again you will come back. All these things are not going to take place so far as the DRP is concerned. It is simply put what it is in the objection that you put up against the draft order in that itself you need to put up your detailed explanation based on that the drp will do its study and give the direction this is the process this is the process so that is what it is saranyam this is the process the 30 days that you are referring for that is the 30 days is only in this context so 30 days is technically in this particular context so the process is very clear that you put up the objection within 30 days that 30 days that you are talking about it is about to putting up your objection before the drp in that you have to detail out every particular uh, objection that you have against the draft order and that is what i said to you once the objection has been put up before the drp thereafter nothing happens students thereafter nothing happens the drp will then put up its study will do its study and on that basis they will give the direction this is the way it happens. 
ओके सो देर फोर जस्ट कीप दिस इन दिस इन माइंड बिकॉज दिस वॉज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज बिंग टारगेटेड अर्लियर सो आई थॉट दैट जस्ट टू गिविंग यू द इन साइड ऑफ द सेम आफ्टर दैट फ्रेंड्स सम पॉइंट ऑन असेसमेंट दिस इज ऑल्सो एडिशनल पॉइंट ऑन दी ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग असेसमेंट सो वील डू दैट एंड लेट्स देन मूव टू अ लास्ट सेगमेंट ऑन टी आर ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग एंड वी विल देन मूव टू इक्वलाइजेशन लेवी देन विल मूव टू इक्वलाइजेशन लेवी Yes, sir, Anya. The thirty days that you are talking about it from the top order, that is true. Let's look upon to the additional points, students, on the transfer pricing assessment quickly. Now, students, just again request to all of you just to ensure to like this video, subscribe to this video because this is the video where henceforth we are going to do all our revision lectures. Okay, so ensure to also share this videos because people are in that other channels of the academy, but there now we are not doing any of the video lecture. We will be doing in this particular channel. So humble request three things: one, like the video, share it, and then thereafter subscribe. Do it, tell them to subscribe this particular channel also. This is what it is, so that at least uh, all of the students may be anticipating that the revision will come in other an academy channel, but the revision henceforth will come only in this particular channel. Okay, so that is the request, not only of my subject, all the subjects which are being there. So just keep that particular point: like, share, and subscribe. Three things, students. Just please request from your end. Now, <coughs> coming on this one, assessment on the transfer pricing part. Two or three important points are there, students. Just keep that in mind. First point is this one, students. Good morning, Sunny. Now, this is very important. One, the order of the TPO is binding on the assessing officer. Again, May sixteen attempt. Can you see this one, students? Just two points is very careful. You know, students. Here, the assessing officer gives a Here he will give the reference to the transfer pricing officer. Here he gives the reference to the transfer pricing officer. Similarly, the assessing officer also gives the reference to the valuation officer. I think many of you are aware in the assessment procedure, the assessing officer also gives the reference to the valuation officer. So the reference which the assessing officer provides or gives is well, number one is in the context of the transfer pricing. in the transfer pricing he can give to the transfer pricing officer and second one he can also give the reference to the valuation officer now please be careful once the transfer pricing officer give its report or once the valuation officer gives its report question arises is can the ao deviate from this particular order the question arises is what can the assessing officer deviate from this particular order to that the answer is no the assessing officer students in this particular case cannot cannot deviate from this particular order meaning thereby such order is binding on the assessing officer so those orders are binding and that exactly what this is the point so ao cannot complete the assessment of income in disregard to the order of the tpo that is the point this is also this kind of a questions are very important students please pay attention to this question <clears throat> i'll quickly students revise this particular point with the two case studies again this is a very important case study students expected in the examination <laughs> please pay attention over here so the question that comes is this all of you please be careful on this one the question is this one students supposingly the indian associated enterprise the indian a students the indian a has say have sold there is a sale and the transfer price was at rupees 100 sold to whom to the say singapore non resident so singapore nr non resident a okay now accordingly whatever was a profit which was being there say for example profit was on 30 so profit was 30 and on this profit they took 10 double deduction they got 10 double deduction 
देर आफ्टर स्टूडेंट्स वॉट हैपन वॉज दैट सब्सिक्वेंटली सब्सिक्वेंटली दी असेसिंग ऑफिसर स्टूडेंट एज यू ऑल आर अवेयर दी सब्सिक्वेंटली दी असेसिंग ऑफिसर सो द ए एल पी दैट वॉज बिंग अडॉप्टेड वॉज वन ट्वेंटी नो इन दैट कॉन्टेक्स क्वेश्चन इज दैट विद दिस वन ट्वेंटी वेदर देर वुड बी एनहांसमेंट ऑफ द डिडक्शन वेदर देर वुड बी अ प्रपोशनेट देर वुड बी अ प्रपोशनेट एनहांसमेंट of the deduction is the question to all of you so students what is your take announcement of the deduction in this context what is your take in this case to that the answer is students no there will not be any further proportionate enhancement of the deduction in this particular case there is a specific proviso under section 92c which says that that just because the alp has been adopted that does not change the commercial reality of the transaction and the commercial reality of the transaction is that you have charged a transfer price of rupees 100 and on that basis only we will provide you the deduction so that is a specific restriction or specific prohibition to provide you the proportionate enhancement of deduction based upon the adoption of the alp so the alp once it is adopted there will not be any further enhancement of the deduction did you all got this one now here i would like to compare students be very careful this is a very important stage this is a very important stage sunny amruta saranya very important stage that we are in because i have to compare this with students in the case of there is one issue if you allow me i can just discuss with you that issue if you allow me otherwise we can proceed further but still for the larger benefit i'm just discussing one issue students supposingly let's forget for a time being transfer pricing for the time being students let's forget transfer pricing okay i'm just taking you right now to the profit link deductions like atia 10aa etc etc now please forget for the time being all this please forget for the time being the transfer pricing chapter and just think of the ati and atib now in ati and atib students the profit which i have have shown the profit given in the by the ssc students i i will give you this note the profit students which has been there the profit which has been there students in this case is say rupees uh, 30 ssc has declared a profit of 30 and on this profit primarily what has happened is that the deduction he has claimed deduction he has claimed of say ata or say tendable whatever it be so he has claimed the reduction on this profit fine now what has happened students is this that in the course of in the course of the transfer pricing or oh, sorry in the course of the assessment i'm just telling you forget transfer pricing for a timing and just think of it in the course of assessment the ao say he has applied 43b that is the deduction on payment basis or the tds provision of 40 ai so he has applied those provisions and based on this particular provision students what he has done he has disallowed disallowed some of the expenses disallowed say rupees i'll just give a number to it disallowed 10 now if you know students in the assessment if the ao applying 43b or say 40 40 ai or any other disallowance provision he is disallowing 10 so what is the revised profit so the revised profit after the disallowance students becomes after the aos disallowance becomes how much 40 after the aos disallowance students it becomes 40 because originally ssc in the return of income he has shown the profit at at 30 ao after the disallowance that he has done in the assessment he has made the profit at 40 question therefore to all of you is that whether the deduction whether the deduction will also be enhanced on such disallowance whether the deduction would also be enhanced on this particular disallowances that the ao has done of rupees 10 so whether my deduction will also enhance in this particular case to that the answer is yes it will be yes it will be sunny my deduction also will get enhanced proportionately in this particular case students so therefore be careful students if at all the position that is there in your question is like this that the ssc has given a profit of 30 the ao in the course of the assessment he has disallowed some of the expenditure and has enhanced your profit to 40 enhanced your profit to 40 then your 
उज्जवल देन योर डिडक्शन ऑफ ए टी आई ए ए टी आई बी टेन डबल ए विल ऑल्सो विल बी ऑन फिफ फोर्टी एंड नॉट ऑन थर्टी दिस इज वॉट इज द कंसेप्ट दैट वी हैव लर्न इन द प्रॉफिट लिंक डिडक्शन बट नाउ कंपेयर दिस विद वॉट वी आर डूइंग इन ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग कंपेयर दिस विद वॉट वी आर डूइंग इन ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग इन द ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग इफ द प्रॉफिट इज इंक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ बिकॉज ऑफ वॉट the profit in the transfer pricing if the profit is increased because of the adoption of the alp so here the increase in the profit is contributed to the adoption of alp whereas in the profit link deduction the increase in the profit was was on account of on account of the disallowances so therefore coming on the transfer pricing part if because of the alp your profit has been increased then that will not result into a further increase in the profit link deduction please take a note of it please take a note of it over here now i'll give you a quick note students as per section 92c comma if on account of if on account of the adoption of alp if on account of the adoption of alp of the alp comma the profit is enhanced the profit is enhanced if on account of alp the profit is enhanced comma then below that right students then that will not that will not result into that will not result into a further enhancement of a further enhancement of what pld i'm just writing short form pld what is pld profit link reduction as per section 92c if on account of the adoption of alp please underline the word on adoption on account of the adoption of the alp so if on account of the adoption of the alp the profit is enhanced comma then that will not result into enhancement of the profit link deduction that will not result into the enhancement of profit link deduction full stop okay now next line students please write next line students you will all write however however if on account of however if on account of if on account of the disallowances under the head pgbp disallowances under the head pgbp if on account of the disallowances under the head pgbp <coughs> if on account of the disallowances under the pgbp the profit the profit is enhanced if on account of the disallowances under the pgbp comma the profit is enhanced then then such enhancement of profit will also result into will also result into such enhancement of profit will also result into the enhancement of deduction the enhancement of deduction full stop fine students one very important question students this last point students before now we move to our next segment this drp will get over and so will be the assessment students last point last point students please pay attention the ao just very important question for your may 22 attempt now supposingly students the ao obviously the soc has made made an objection against the draft order before the drp the drp has given the direction 
the drp has given the direction to whom to the assessing officer based on that direction the ao has passed the order based on that direction the ao has passed the order fine so therefore the question to all of you is this that whether be careful expected may 22 question whether the order passed by the ao whether the order passed by the ao passed by the ao on the direction of the drp on the direction of the drp can it be can it be revised under section 263 by the cit under section 263 by the cit <coughs> I am repeating the question whether the order passed by the assessing officer on the direction of the DRP can it be revised under section 263 by the CIT can it be revised under section 263 by the CIT students what is your take on that quickly can it be revised by the CIT under section 263 students saranya in this context can it be revised under section 263 by the cit i will say sir what is the revision provision can you tell us so students as far as that provision of section 263 is what that the order of the ao if it is erroneous and it is prejudicial to the interest of revenue the order of the ao if it is erroneous and it is prejudicial to the interest of revenue then yes that order can be revised so in that case that order can be revised so here the question is that whether in this particular case study the on the direction of the drp the uh, the the assessing officer has passed the order of assessment now the question to all of you is this that whether the cit can revise such order passed by the ao on the basis of the direction received by the drp so answer to that students is the answer is yes the drp uh, direction on which the ao has passed the order please be very careful it still remains the ao's order it still remains whose order the ao's order and therefore if it is the ao order the nature of the order is in substance that of the ao's order then yes the cit can revise that particular order which the ao has passed on the basis of the direction of what on the basis of the direction of the drp now many of you also sir but how that can be revised obviously many students are getting this doubt in their mind the reason is very clear the cit will will look into it that whether the ao has properly implemented the direction given by the drp and if the cit feels that the ao has not properly implemented the direction given by the drp then in that particular case that particular order of the ao is erroneous order that particular order of the ao is an erroneous order and if it is also a prejudicial to the interest of revenue if it is also prejudicial to the interest of revenue then can that be revised answer is yes it can be revised so i hope that every one of you are clear with this one students now <clears throat> this is what it is students again i am repeating students yesterday we have done with the transfer pricing i am just trying to wrap up this one uh, i will be giving the link of all the videos in the description box after the lecture not today's lecture tomorrow because the staff will not be there so tomorrow i will be giving the link now with that students i am done with that now now students what is left let's try to deal with that one students <clears throat> what is left now a uh, multi year data from the two things which i'll now discuss and that should be all transfer pricing is over from my side two things students now is left one is this multi year data concept i just wanted to discuss with all of you this multi year data this is the only thing which has not been targeted by the icai up till now in the examination and some or the other i feel very important this particular theoretical part and i will make you understand and obviously i would know that many of you would not have done it so let's try to understand this particular concept but before that we will we will just look into this one students here 
there is one very important point. Please pay attention. <coughs> See, up till now, students, in the question, be careful. You have to solve at the end of the day. I am expecting how the ICI can twist it. And they have twisted it not long back. Just, I think, two attempts back only. Students, please read the question in your examination very carefully. Supposing, students, if they give you only one comparable data, only one comparable data, and thereafter they will give you some uncommon factors between the comparable data and the transfer price between the comparable data and the international transaction so if they give you only one comparable data it means that you will get only one alp only one alp because obviously on the basis of the comparable data you will adjust with the uncommon factor and you will get the alp 99 percent of the questions in the examination 99% of the questions in the examination we have got up till now are based on are based on one comparable data so therefore in that case if it is one comparable data uh, apply the uncommon factor get the ALP but what if there is more than one comparable data then what you do if there is more than one comparable data students in that particular case the game changes if there is more than one comparable data students then in that particular case students for each comparable data be careful what i'm saying now for each comparable data you will apply the whatever is the only one method of the alp will be applied in whatever whatever be the number of the comparable data doesn't matter you will apply only a single method always keep this in mind and if you want to write in your own words you can write it if the question has got more than one comparable data then you will ensure that in respect of all the comparables given to you you will apply only only a single method which is the most appropriate method to be applied in that particular question only one method is what could be applied based on that if you if you apply the methods of the alp on more than one comparable data you will definitely will get more than one alp if you apply the methods of the alp on more than one comparable data definitely students you will get what you will get more than one alp and if you are getting more than one alp then what happens then this is what it would be now this type of question the ICI has asked once wherein they have given you more than one particular comparable data to the international transaction <coughs> and what did I told you? <coughs> and what did I told you? You will apply only a single comparable data. You will apply only a single comparable data. Get that more than one ALP. And then do what? Then do this. Students, be careful. Do what now? Do this. If there is more than one comparable. If there is more than one comparable students, then in that particular case, students, the method. Which method, students, in this context? The method primarily which would be applied will be any method like cup method is there. The cup method, all the method except the profit split method. So here all the method like cup method, the cost plus method, the resale price method, the transaction net margin method. If these are the methods which are being put up and the comparable size is six or more than six and the comparable size students is six or more than six so therefore just make this correction students in this chart six or more than six if the comparable size students is six or more than six then the answer as i told you can be yes or the answer can be no if the answer is yes the comparable size is six or more than six if the answer is yes then we all know we go with the range concept we go with the range concept and if the comparable size is not is not more the is not is a is less than six in a simple word if the comparable size is less than six then what we do we do the arithmetic mean am is the arithmetic mean of the alp the am is the arithmetic mean of the alp so the arithmetic mean of the alp is what needs to be taken into account in this context it's an average you will do the average of the alp and that is what it is. Now you have to see this point, students. Be careful. You have to see this particular point. And what is this particular point? If the difference between the arithmetic mean of the ALP 
and the transfer price. The difference between the arithmetic mean of the ALP and the transfer price, if that difference does not exceed 3% of the transfer price or 1% of the transfer price in the case of the wholesaler, then in that particular case, students, we will accept your transfer price because the deviation is not much. Deviation, when it is compared with what is compared, the transfer price compared with the arithmetic mean, if the deviation is not more than 3% of the transfer price or 1% of the transfer price in the case of the wholesaler, then in that case, we will accept your transfer price. But if you say no, so the deviation is going beyond 3%, then in that case, the arithmetic mean will be the final answer. The arithmetic mean will be the final answer. Clear with this one? But what if the comparable size is minimum 6? What if the comparable size is 6 or more than 6? Then obviously students, you cannot then do, you cannot then go with, go with what? Then in that particular case students, you can never go with the arithmetic mean. You would then have to go with the range concept. Now what is this range concept? Now I'm just skipping students point number 1. The This point number 1 in the box which is given below. Because I will explain you the weighted average concept in the my next particular last segment. So just look into this. Students, when you are given, when you are having more than one comparable data, more than one compare, sorry, when you have got six or more than six comparable data, then range concept would be applicable. Then what are the steps that will be applied in the range concept? The steps are number one, whatever is the data that has been given to you, which is six or more than six, please arrange the data in the ascending order. Ascending order, ascending order means from lower value to the higher value. So that is how you have to arrange all the data. Give the numbering accordingly. Like the lower number given with 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. So therefore, arrange the data in the ascending order from lower value to the higher value. And please give the serial numbers accordingly. And thereafter, check out how many datas are there. Say for example, the data is 7. Say for example, the data is 7. So once the data you know it is 7, then the next step is take 35% of the data. 35% of the data, it will give you an answer of 7 into 30% is 2.1 something. So you will then take the next number, which is the, which is the next number, 3. In the decimal, you always go with the next number in the in the range concept. So you will go to 3 and against 3, what is the what is the ALP that has been mentioned? That is the first range that you have got. That is the first range that you have got at 35% of the data set. The next is your 65% of the data set, which is 7 in my example. 65% of the data set, which is 7 in my example. Take that. So 7 into 65, 4 point something, which you will take to the next number, which is 5. So against number 5, against number 5, what is the what is the ALP which has been given to you? You will take that as your another range. So now you have got the range from at 3, what is the number? And at 4, and at 5, what is the number? And these are the range. And check whether your transfer price falls within this range or not. Your transfer price falls within this range or not. And if it doesn't fall within your in this range, then in that particular case, students, you will then proceed to determine the ALP to be adopted for the purpose of the transfer pricing adjustment. And for that purpose, students, you then have to take 50% of the data set, meaning the 50% is the median. So 50% of the data set. In this example, it is 7. So 7, it comes to 3.5. If it is 3.5, what did I told you? You have to always go with the next number, which is 4. And therefore, in this case, 3.5 means the next number is 4 against 4. Whatever is the ALP, that is your final answer. And that is what you are going to select for the purpose of doing the comparison with the transfer price. The difference will be the final transfer pricing adjustment that you have to do. Now, there is a second particular point here. Just keep in mind. Supposingly, the data set is instead of 7, it is 8. Instead of 7, it is 8. So the 35%, 65% that we have discussed will remain the same. But thereafter, once you establish the range, once you have established that particular range and you find that the transfer price is not falling within this particular range, it is going beyond this range. Then what did I told you? Then you will take 50% of the data set, which is the median. And therefore, 50% of the data set is how much? 50% of 8 by doing this you get an absolute number of four by doing this you get an absolute number of four now in this case 
the range concept does not does not require you to go with the absolute number the range concept does not require you to go with the absolute number so now since you have got an absolute number 4 which is 50 percent of the data set of 8 4 is there so what do you do is this that in this case they have said in such case what do you need to do whatever is the value at 4 and whatever is the value at 5 take the average of the two and that average will the, be the final ALP and on that basis you will do the final transfer pricing adjustment on that basis students you will do the final transfer pricing adjustment <coughs> Himachal I hope that all of you are clear with this one students in this context with that students this is all about the range concept which I have talked about it and now the most important point which many of you are not aware of this one and this is about this one be careful to multi-year data what is this concept of multi-year data students? <coughs> students here in fact what we are given in the question this multi-year data students Sunny, <coughs> this multi-year data Students, here let's have a look. In this multi-year data, students, what exactly it is? Students, the three methods, where is the margin which is involved? In which methods that we use the margin? In which the transfer pricing method we use the margin? So there are the three methods, which is the resale price method. There we take the margin. The cost plus method. There we take the margin. And also the transaction net margin method in that method also we take the margin these are the three method methods on which we are taking up the margin isn't it so margin is what we take margin of the comparable margin of the comparable isn't it in these three methods students we take the margin of the comparable now please understand this the margin is depend on the two factors which are those two it is the two factors are there for the margin which are those two factors? One is the cost, another is the selling price. One is the cost, another is the selling price. All of you will agree, Palak. One is the cost and another is the selling price. So therefore, this is the basis of getting the margin. This is the basis of getting the margin. I hope that every one of you are clear. Now, just imagine this, how sensitive it can become. Like say, for example, the COVID times. I am taking the comparable in the COVID time against my international transaction which I have done. So I am taking the comparables in this COVID times. Now in the COVID time, the government have told that please don't increase your price. Don't increase your price. You just ensure that the price is at a particular level. And I'm following the government directive not to increase the price, just to maintain my price at a static level. Isn't it? So the cost is higher. But the government said to me that no, I should not be increasing my price in the COVID time. Now what happens? Is the margin which I'm getting it in this COVID time, is it a correct margin? Is it the normal margin? And the answer is no, I am not getting a normal margin now. Because I am being influenced, I am being influenced whether government, whether external factor, whether this factor or that factor to influence to keep my price on check. Similarly, there can also be some influence that could be done to keep your cost under the check, some external factors. So what happens, students, please understand, these three methods are based on the margin. And the margin is a factor of two, one cost and another selling price. So just imagine if you take one year only as a data of comparable, if you take only one year as your data of comparable and any unusual that could happen on either the cost factor or on the selling price factor then the margin that you are adopting for the purpose of application in these three method the margin itself is not reliable the margin itself is not reliable and that is the reason why they are telling you that please don't take for these three methods when the margin is the basis of doing all the adjustment to determine the alp when the margin is the basis in this three particular method so they are saying that please don't take only the current year data you also have to take up the last two years data so the last two years data data of what data of cost and the data of selling price 
and on that basis come up with a weighted margin the margin that we have to determine has to be the weighted margin students and take up that weighted margin and ultimately that weighted margin is only what would be considered for the purpose of determination of the alp in these particular three methods which three methods the method is resale price cost plus and transaction net margin method why not this particular concept is applicable to cost plus method as uh, why not this particular concept is applicable in the comparable uncontrolled price method why is it that in the comparable uncontrolled price method this weighted average or the multi year data as the concept is not made applicable what is the reason the reason is very clear comparable uncontrolled price factor does not talk about the margin it talks about the absolute number and it is only one variable that plays out in the comparable uncontrolled price method it, it is only the one particular variable that plays out what is the variable it the variable can be either we are comparing cost or maybe we are comparing the selling price so that is what we are doing the comparison so far as the comparable uncontrolled price method is concerned so since the variable is only one factor which is either the cost or the selling price therefore in this particular case the for the cup method we are only going by the data of the current year we are only going by the data of the current year we don't go with the three years data but when it comes to resale price method cost plus method and the transaction net margin method the three years data is what you need to consider and start determining the alp based on this three years data and what is this three years data the current year plus the last two years the current year plus the last two years is that clear to all of you students all of you are clear with this one now i will show you through a practical problem because otherwise you will not appreciate the discussion that we have done it right now so maybe one small question is was there here where that question has gone one quick question students we will be doing on the multi year data this is what it is please have a look vsi can you see that students all the students do request to all of you please like the video quickly share it and subscribe it all the revision lectures now henceforth would only be in this particular channel okay of an academy all the revision lectures are in this particular channel only that's my humble sub suggestion to all of you so in the chart students you will find this particular vsi limited question what it says vsi limited an indian company is a captive software development service provider of fsl limited a company resident in singapore which is a holding company of vsl limited so holding company means uh, this relationship is established a relationship VSL has earned an operating margin of 4.16 on the operating cost from the international transaction entered during the financial year 21-22 as under. So in this case, from the international transaction, students, international transaction means transaction with whom? International transaction means transaction with whom? Transaction with their non-resident A. Transaction with their non-resident A. So with the transaction with their non-resident A, the margin that they have earned is 4.16 percent on the cost. you have been given operating revenue operating cost and the operating profit obviously students i can see that if they are giving me students yesterday itself yesterday itself i was discussing this with all of you and what was the discussion that we had in the yesterday's class the discussion was this that if you are given the profit percentage as a percentage of cost the profit as a percentage of cost it can be which method that they are talking about it it is a cost plus method the profit percentage as a percentage of cost in this case which method they are talking about it they are talking about it about the cost plus method or they are talking about the transaction net margin method they are talking about the transaction net margin method which is having the base with cost which is having what the base with the cost i told you there are two variants there are two variants of transaction net margin method which are the two variants the transaction net margin method having a base with cost and the transaction net margin method having a base with the reselling price so and what did i told you students yesterday in the yesterday's class what did i told you that the transaction net margin method having a base with the cost it is the same as that of cost plus method in the examination so don't worry 
okay the only thing that changes is in that transaction net margin method having a base with the resale price method having a base with the resale price method and what is the change that is there i give you the comparison between the tnmm method having a base with resale price versus the resale price method itself and i told you where exactly the change takes place the change takes place is in that step number 2 of the transaction net margin method and step number 4 of the resale price method that exactly what the real thing was i will be giving you the link to those who are watching the today's lecture primarily i will give you the link of all the lectures in the description box but i'll give it the link tomorrow now accordingly students let's have a look to all of us here palak here in operating revenue 250 operating cost 240 operating profit 10 and thereafter students 4.16 is what is the uh, derivation of how they have determine the operating margin vis a vis the operating cost the operating margin vis a vis the operating cost so this is a derivation please be careful students please be very careful that this is the the data is in respect of the international transaction that it is a transaction with your non resident a and who is a non resident a fsl limited now compute the alp and the primary adjustment to be made on the following data and what is that students the alp to be computed there are three data that they have given to you student there are three data that is that they have given to you so three comparables are there okay three comparables are there and can you see that students current year is financial year 21 22 and what did i told you weighted average would be for the other two years also they will give it to you so other two years also are also given to us so financial year 1920 and 2021 now how what to do in this regard students what to do in this regard this is what we will have to do please pay attention now one by one it's an easy one don't worry about it just you need to understand it it will become very easy so first is students you need to compute the weighted average of the this thing so how you see how you do this students of all the three years as i told you weighted average you have to for multi year data means what multi year data means all the three years you add up all the operating profit and add all the operating cost add all the operating profit and add all the operating cost so by adding all the operating profit 12 plus 10 plus 35 so this in this case 12 plus 10 plus 35 in this particular context students it becomes what in this context it becomes 57 operating profit students in this case is 57 and same is also here uh, 150 100 and 225 this is 475 same way also you will do the total for this take the total of all operating profit and all the operating cost please take the total of the thing of all the three years so the three years data of the operating profit and the three years data of the of the operating cost is what you will take that into account and once you have taken this into account according to see what happens then you take the weighted average now you get the margin students now you are getting the margin so this margin is not based on the single year data the margin students in this three methods should not be determined on the basis of a single year data single year data the margin that has to be determined in this three methods will be on the basis of in this three method will be based on the three years data so the three years data should be considered to develop the margin of the comparable transaction now please pay attention in the examination in the examination students if they give you only one comparable if in the examination students they will give you only one comparable my job is over only one comparable if students they are giving it to you so what you will do if only one comparable they are giving it to you so what you will do that is it 12% is my margin and on that basis margin i'll proceed and put up the number in the relevant step and develop my alp on that basis the margin i will put up in that particular relevant step of that particular method and i'll get my alp that is what i do but here i have got three comparables so do you know if the comparable size is more than 1 then but less than 6 if the comparable size is more than 1 but less than 6 students then what you do if the comparable size is more than 1 but less than 6 students then in that case i take the arithmetic mean if the comparable size is more than 1 but less than 6 then it is the arithmetic mean that has to be considered now therefore i get 8.74 i get what 8.74 
now 8.74 is the operating margin which is there versus your operating margin was something around how much was the operating margin students somewhere 4 point something let's take that even the difference is 4 4 point something something i am not aware now 4.1 supposedly now difference is some 4 point something something the difference is 4 point something something now this difference is more than 50 percent i can see leave aside the tolerable difference is only three percent of the transfer price the three percent is what can be tolerable but here i can see the difference is not three percent it is more than that the difference is huge students the difference in this case is huge and that being the case students i will then reject what i will then reject this particular the operating margin given to you in the international transaction and i will recompute the alp based on based on the margin i am got margin which i have got which is 8.74 so 8.74 students is my final margin in this case and on that basis how do i go about it tnmm method is what i'm supposed to apply so here students on the operating cost on the operating cost students on the operating cost of 240 please add 8.74 percent 8.74 percent comes to 20 point 20.976 directly uh, the answer on the operating cost because it is it is a tnmm method students please pay attention it is a tnmm method with the cost variant with the cost variant so the margin has to be added to added to the uh, the operating cost of 240 i am adding 8.74 percent which gives me 20.976 so how much should be my arm strength price how much should be my arm strength price students the arm strength price is 20 260.976 260.976 this is the price which i should have charged to my singapore a this is a price which i should have charged to my singapore a as against this how much is the actual price which i have charged the actual price range that i have charged is only 250 is only 250 so what would be the transfer pricing adjustment 10.976 did you all got this one did you all got this one this would be my transfer pricing adjustment i hope that every one of you are clear with this any query on this method i am open to that now <clears throat> any query on this method students you i'm open to that because i do understand many of you are doing this for the very first time this is the only area which the ici has not asked any question and you have to be extremely be very careful i've told you the logic what is the relevance of this method why the multi-year data is something which has been given to you in the question everything is known to all of you now isn't it multi-year data why it is necessary for this three methods why not for the cup method we have to apply multi-year data because it goes only with one variable the either it will be to do with the cost or it will be to do with the selling price but when it comes to these three particular methods which we are talking about it in this case there are two variables that plays out one is the cost and the and the selling price and therefore we cannot be 100 percent sure that whether the margin which has been given of the current year is a reliable margin for these three methods so therefore to ensure to take out any doubt about the reliability of the margin to take out any doubt about the reliability of the margin we go with the three years data and since we are going with the three years data students what exactly we do in this regard we are then doing the aggregate and how to do the aggregate i have shown to all of you the aggregate of all the profits and the aggregate of all the cost if it is a tnm method had it been a resale price method students please tell me in the examination in the examination this can also be a resale price method supposing if the in, instead of this this is a resale price method in that case what what would be the data that will be given to you then what will be the data that will be given to you then the data that will be given to you would be operating profit and the reselling price the because the margin that we require in the reselling price method is the margin of margin of the profit vis-a-vis -vis the reselling price margin of the profit vis-a-vis -vis the reselling price is what we actually require in this particular case and therefore in this context students we say we say that this is the margin is what we will look into it and based on that students based on that there we will do in the reselling price the aggregate of all the profit divided by the aggregate of all the reselling price for the three years and then the combined three years data of the profit divided by the combined three years data of the reselling price you will get the the weighted average margin the reselling price margin if it is only one comparable data given to you absolutely no issues 
go with that one comparable data and whatever is that weighted average margin that you have computed just now directly apply in that relevant step which I have taught you yesterday of the resale price method and please get your ALP. Okay, but if it is more than one year, more than one comparable which is given to you, if it is more than one comparable given to you, so for that many number of comparables, you will then determine the weighted average margin first and thereafter, if the comparable size is less than 6, take the take the arithmetic mean of all the weighted average margin that you have determined in the above table. And once you took the arithmetic mean, that particular margin that you determine as per the arithmetic mean will now play out, play out in your calculation. The calculation as per the relevant method of the reselling price. I hope that every one of you are clear with this one, students. All of you. And that exactly is the game that you will have to play on the day of the examination. Students, secondary adjustment, can I give it to you? I think secondary adjustment, students, all of you are clear. I will only discuss two particular points in secondary adjustment. There is no difficulty, even you people are aware that secondary adjustment is an easy one. Although I have given one question here, Vishnu poly polymers, secondary adjustment, but only two or three points. I just need to discuss with all of you so far as the secondary adjustment is concerned. So which is that two or three points? First of all, be very careful that one crore threshold is there. Students, this more than one crore threshold, an important point is used in the secondary adjustment. And also more than one crore threshold students is also used in 94B, the thin capitalization. So only when the threshold exceed more than one crore that these two concepts are applicable. Now there in 94B that we discussed yesterday was the interest payment. The interest payment should go beyond rupees one crore. The interest payment students should go beyond rupees one crore. That is what we have said in this last particular lecture. <coughs> Here, students, here in this context, what do we say over here, students? Here in this particular context, students, what we say is this, that. Here in this particular context, students, what we say is this, that the difference between, the difference between the primary adjustment and the secondary adjustment, sorry, the difference between the ALP and the transfer price, if it is more than rupees 1 crore, Okay, then students, that additions that you will do in your solution, you will refer that additions as a primary adjustment because the additions is going beyond rupees 1 crore. Okay, so if the difference is going beyond rupees 1 crore between the ALP and the transfer price, then in that particular case, that will be referred as, that will be referred as a primary adjustment. Okay, now comes the concept of the secondary adjustment. Now the government will definitely will add this difference in your total income. Not only that, they will also expect you that the difference should get repatriated into India. The difference should be repatriated into India within 90 days from the relevant date. Within 90 days from the relevant date. Now, and if the difference is not repatriated into India within 90 days from the relevant date, then in that particular case, we will consider the difference as a deemed loan. And the deemed loan will result into the addition of notional interest. The deemed loan will result into the addition of the notional interest. The calculation of the notional interest is very critical. What is that? First of all, the rate of interest and from which date the, the interest calculation shall be made. Two things, students, when we have to calculate the notional interest, again I am repeating, the notional interest will come into picture when the difference, you have not realized it within 90 days from the relevant date, then in that particular case, the consequence will be secondary adjustment, meaning thereby the addition of notional interest, the addition of the notional interest in, in the total income. Now, that notional interest is based on the two factors. The two factors are, number one, what is the rate of interest? And number two, from which date the interest will be computed? So, the first one, let's try to figure it out. The first one would be the rate of interest. The rate of interest students will depend upon, depend upon what? <coughs> the rate of interest students will depend upon, upon whether the transaction, the international transaction, is it denominated in the INR or it is denominated in the foreign currency? If it is denominated in the INR students, if it is denominated in the INR, then the SBI rate 
as on the first day first day of the previous year primarily whatever is the first day of the previous year mcq question congratulations the ici gave you the sbi rate on the first day of the previous year as well as the first day of the assessment year also like for you people the previous year is 21 22 so ici had given you in the question first april 2021 what was the sbi rate prevailing and they have also given you the sbi rate prevailing as on first april 2022 so question to all of you therefore is students what you are going to do are you going to go with first april 2021 or first april 2022 then in that case students you all are aware it has to be first april 2021 the first day of the previous year students is what you always will keep in mind so students in this context students in this particular context you will go with the first day first april of the previous year whatever is the sbi rate given to you that you will pick up and on that please add 3.25% please add 3.25% but if the international transaction is denominated in foreign currency if the international transaction is denominated in the foreign currency in that particular case students what is that you are going to do then in that case students you people will then do do what i think all of you are aware now in that particular case students you are going to take up the first april of the previous sorry you will take up the libor rate whatever is the libor rate which has been given to you and on that libor rate you are going to add 3% which has been given 3% which has been given so students whatever is the existing libor rate on that you will be adding 3% now this is your computed interest rate so this is your computed interest rate and on this computed interest rate you are going to compute the interest liability now the interest liability will be computed from which date two options from which date the interest liability will be computed two option option number 1 after the expiry of 90 days from the relevant date that the interest liability would be computed after the expiry of 90 days from the relevant date that the interest liability would be computed or the interest liability would be computed or the interest liability would be computed after after what students after the relevant date itself from the relevant date itself after the expiry of 90 days from the relevant date after the expiry of 90 days from the relevant date that the interest will be calculated or the interest would be calculated from the relevant date itself the answer is the interest will be calculated from the relevant date itself from the relevant date now students be very careful when i say the word from the relevant date it means do you know what that relevant date also needs to be considered in your calculation the relevant date in your calculation students you have to be extremely careful be about that calculation because this is where the icci is going to ask you the questions in the exam this question which has been given vishnu polymers in this question you will get the message that in the relevant date when you start calculating the interest from the relevant date from the relevant date in that calculation you will also take into account the relevant date as well i hope that all of you are clear with this one many students are asking sir what what do you mean by relevant date in a very simple terms two things one is if suomoto the assc is doing a primary adjustment in the roi and the adjustment is more than rupees 1 crore then the date of then the due date not the date the due date of filing of the roi the due date of the filing of the roi is the relevant date if the ssc is making a suo moto primary adjustment of more than rupees 1 crore in the roi then the due date of filing of the roi not the date of filing of the roi so the due date of filing of the roi will be considered as a relevant date and that relevant date you will see within 90 days whether the ssc has repatriated that difference amount if not then the interest will be calculated at what rate i have told you and the difference uh, and the interest will be calculated from the relevant date the interest will be calculated from the relevant date now the relevant date students as i told you students will be calculated from the date relevant date so here would be the due date of filing of the return of income by the way what is the due date of filing of the return of income 30th of november 30th of november 
so from 30th of november students you are going to calculate the interest so 30th november will get in are you getting this one the second case of relevant date is when the assessing officer has passed the order and the order is accepted by the sse and the order is accepted by the sse so the date of passing of the order students the date of passing of the order will be also considered while calculating while calculating that number of days the date of order would also be considered is that clear to of you so the way i am telling you in that first category where in the suomoto case was there of the ssc doing the primary adjustment of more than 1 crore then in that case the due date of filing of the roi the due date of filing of the roi becomes a relevant date and therefore if the money has not been repatriated within 90 days from the relevant date the interest will be calculated from the relevant date in this example it is 30th of november in this example it is 30th of november similarly if the ssc does not himself do a suomoto primary adjustment but it is done by the assessing officer in the order and the order is accepted by the ssc and the order is accepted by the ssc then in that particular case students i think all of you are aware and the order is accepted by the ssc then in that particular case students all of you can say say what students exactly students exactly all of you will say that <coughs> the date of order will become the relevant date but one more there is also one more variant students one more variant if the ssc files an appeal then then the appellate authority will pass the order and finally that order is accepted by the ssc then the date of passing of the order by the appellate authority which is accepted by the ssc finally that date of passing of the order will become the relevant date and that date also would be counted while calculating the period while calculating the period for which the interest will be charged that date also will be calculated i think that this point i have made it very clear and my humble suggestion is that immediately you will solve this particular question students and that should be all and that should be all students <coughs> fine so students i have done with the transfer pricing completely 10 marks secured what do you think i have done with the in my revision i am also doing with you practicals as well because revision without practicals is no revision because these are the question which are going to be there in your examination in the practical form now many students are asking sir from where you are uh, uh, from where we have to purchase the chart i am just giving you the details of the books the book stores wherein you can just buy the chart up to you so that is the book store friends you can just contact them directly and you can get your physical copy of chart if you require it so we are done with this complete students now students i will have to leave you today a bit early because actually i had a appointment of 11:15 i thought of doing the equalization lab but don't worry in the next session in half an hour <coughs> i will be finishing off equalization equalization lab is very simple concept there is only one equalization lab only which you have to discuss and we all are aware 165a the 165a the new one and there are some amendments which are there although the amendments i have separately have covered in my amendment class but still we will discuss the amendment in this equalization lab also okay we'll still discuss the amendment for the last time so i'm discussing the amendments also in my revision class quickly so that the things becomes comprehensive yeah there are some stand alone like for example reassessment 147 that reassessment already i have done it in my amendment lecture so i may not do the reassessment come again completely okay because that has been done so i will share you the link of that reassessment class so obviously that will save our time okay because i have done that amendment specifically in my lectures is that clear to all of you students next saturday students i think all of you are aware our revision lectures are on saturday and sunday now next weekend what is the target when students are asking the target for the next week i am going to start with the trust taxation now if you want i can now i can do one thing saturday class i will be using it for the topics which topics the topics would be on the saturday's class would be on the equalization levy the general anti avoidance rule the gar provision and the theory topic the gar provision majorly and maybe the theory topic theory topic i am doubtful but i'll just try the theory topics on the non resident taxation that is the next saturday okay so next saturday students these are the topics primarily which i'm going to target for all of you and next sunday next sunday so next sunday the topic would be trust taxation 
the next sunday the topic would be trust taxation revision so i'm already giving you the plan of action trust taxation i think trust taxation itself will consume our time majorly because trust taxation is a game in this context okay so trust taxation and maybe dividend tax if you are fresh i will take up the dividend tax also trust taxation and dividend taxation the game changer students for your examination these two topics i'm going to take after that the mat and the other tds tcs would be on the next saturday and sunday next saturday and sunday would be mat there after alternate tax regime and there after tds and tcs that would be on next saturday and sunday and final saturday and sunday would be assessment procedure penalties rectification appeals and revision this is how we are going to go about it is that clear to all of you any particular concerns that you have about revision do let me know i will keep that in my mind you will say sir what about capital gains and other things fine you want me to do capital gains i'll then real require one more saturday and sunday so that will spill over to Mar march end that may then spill over to march end is that clear to all of you then fine so therefore i can then do cg and the remaining balance small small topic whatever is there is that clear students any queries now you are having it so the next saturday the date as you all are aware would be <sighs> Twelfth set twelfth March, and next Sunday thirteen March. So I'm giving you the dates for twelfth and thirteen March. Then nineteenth and twentieth March. Yeah, surely dividend tax is done. Then surrogate tax. These are small small topics. Surrogate tax again, maybe a one hour revision time. I'll do that revision. Don't worry. But then I'll do it in the month end. Theory topics I've already told. Hear it. and our next particular saturday we will take the theory topic as well yes shali survey taxes one hour job is there reit you want to students are saying what about reit uh, aif and the buyback tax the three particular area i will take that into account in march end the saturday and sunday which will fall in march end because now you can also see which i think march end all of you are aware we are going to get it over all of you can also make it out by march and we are getting it over this saturday sunday i gave you the target next saturday sunday also i told you what i'm going to do the mat tds and tcs alternate tax regime is what will be there and i will try to use to complete i will try to use to complete the surrogate taxes also on that next saturday sunday on that next saturday sunday which will then will make us to go to our final final revision that we will do the final revision students that we are going to do on the 20 what would be there at 26 27 26 and 27 march will be the last session on which capital gains and the other remaining topics i am going to target capital gains would be on 26 and 27 march not entirely capital gains will be done in this today's only one session i think would be required for covering up the entire capital gains and one more session on 27th of march by the way students rtp i am doing it right now wednesday or thursday one mostly wednesday i'll do rtp i'll just let you know on that mostly wednesday i'll do the rtp but i'm just informing to all of you at night i'm going to do this rtp december 2021 timing would be at 10:30 do ensure to subscribe to this channel and do like the video also and please do share the video so at least the students knows what are the important topics that we are going to discuss in the coming this particular month revision is done revision is done many students are asking sir what about the case studies the case study students which is there in terms of the recent icci recent icci case study are you aware of that i am starting a series on the discussion of a recent case studies which the icci has given it to you from 15th of uh, sorry from next saturday and sunday from next saturday and sunday i am starting at the night 10:30 pm 10:30 pm students are timing so in those we will discuss the case study which has been introduced the recent one saturday and sunday and you say sir it is only saturday and sunday i'm starting from saturday and sunday and maybe i'll take some more few week days uh, also because obviously saturday and sunday would be a huge gap primarily so i'll take some more week days also but all at night at 10:30 pm that would be a special class in an academy students that would be the special class in an academy okay so that is one thing which i just thought of telling to all of you that would be the special class where will be the link don't worry i'll give you the link 
in the next saturday class i'll give you that link of that special class also if you want is that clear to all of you students now students very quickly i'll make one announcement about our features in an academy platform i'll take palak capital gains i had given you the date 26th of march the capital gains would be on 26th of march C iconic program students is the flagship program. All of you are aware that now in the N Academy we have got three program that we are running. One is the plus, which is the regular that we every one of you are aware. The iconic program and one is the new program light I L I T E. That is for test series basically. Now the iconic program is the premium segment for all of us. <clears throat> PLD means Shamna. Just tell me what is this PLD. I'll accordingly will refer this. Now, C iconic program is a premium segment for an academy. However, the price is not premium. The price is affordable, easy on pocket with all the features. The features are very distinguishing, game changing, and they are one-on-one -on -one doubt solving sessions are there with the exclusive doubt solvers who are chartered accountants. Evaluated test series programs are also there. In which very case, every subject in that entire group. You are having a graded test series program of forty, eighty, and hundred marks. Every subject, printed books are given. Iconic has this distinction feature, because in plus and in this case, in plus we don't give the printed books, but in Iconic we are. And the Discord is a discussion channel. Remaining features remain the same, students, which has been there in this context. One important point now. I think the evaluated test series I have already told to you. One important one is that once do tell to all your friends, colleagues, neighbors who so are taking subscription, any subscription, in an academy to use the referral code CADS for any duration, be it twelve months, twenty four months, thirty six months, because by virtue of that you get a ten percent outright discount. Please do tell them. Fine. Now the query which Shamnath is asking is by adopting the ALP the profit increases but profit reduction is not allowed. So suppose by adoption of the ALP by AO the turnover crosses the limit given by the ATIC. That's a good question. That is hundred crores you are talking about, isn't it? That is a hundred crores that you are talking about. The turnover of ATIC. In that particular case, whether in that case he will become ineligible. That is what you are suggesting. Isn't it? To me, the deduction will still be available because he is taking the deduction as per the old one. The proviso to ninety two C says what? That see the turnover is the turnover as reported in the books. The turnover shamnath that we take, the turnover shamnath that we take is the turnover that we report in the books primarily. So that becomes the basis of deciding whether. The SSC will be eligible for ATIAC or not, whereas ALP is the arm's length price, which is which is used only to only for what? Only for the purpose of only for the purpose of computing your total income. So the ALP is used for a limited purpose. Ninety two C themselves come do a confession. What is the confession that the ninety two C does? The confession that ninety two C does is this that they themselves say. Students, that they themselves say, ninety two C themselves say, says what? They say that look, we are doing this particular amendment, but that does not changes the commercial reality of your transaction. So the fact that they am um, themselves admit in that proviso that this particular adjustment we are doing it, this particular adjustment we are doing it, but it does not changes your commercial reality of your transaction, which we are going by the Transfer price, which we are going by your transfer price. So therefore, in that case, the ALP that is computed, the ALP that is computed is used only for a limited purpose. What does it imply? What the proviso to ninety two C imply? The proviso to ninety two C imply that the ALP that is computed is to be used only for limited purpose. And what is the purpose? What is the purpose? The purpose is only. To do with the transfer pricing adjustment, the purpose is only to do with the transfer pricing adjustment. The purpose was never, and is never. The purpose was never, and the purpose is never to stretch this ALP concept beyond the territory. And therefore, so far as 
the turnover threshold for the applicability of AT IAC is concerned, you will go with what is in the books and not what is determined as per the ALP. Is that clear to all of you? And that exactly is the game. So with that, students, you are done with this one. I hope that all of you are clear with this. See you on the next Saturday. Timing remain the same. The timing, students, all of you are aware. I'll be starting at 5.30 on the next Saturday. 5.30 students on the next Saturday. Fine. Take care. Bye-bye.